Hello, God bless you, and welcome to the house of His glory. I am Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones. Thank you so much for joining me today. It is the last Sunday in October. It is the 30th, and I'm just so glad that you are here with me today, especially if you are new, if you are visiting, um, and you, I, I shouldn't say especially, I'm just glad for whoever is worshiping with me today, for everyone who has tuned in today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you are tuning in uh, live, please chat with us at the house of his gloria.com forward slash live say hello tune in i'm so grateful for the folks that um chatted with us last sunday we had some um a couple of new visitors on the chat um and that was just awesome we also had new visitors um on demand so if you're watching us from the house of his gloria.com forward slash messages thank you so much and if you ordinarily watch from the app which is at iChurch for life um, I have uh, gotten that issue squared away um, apparently I had not published all of the October messages to the app so I apologize they stopped at September and it was total um, input error I just didn't click the the publish button I was uploading them <laughs> and making sure all the sermons were connected I just wasn't publishing them so I apologize and that is all squared away as well and as always, if you're watching us from YouTube as well, thank you so much. And also, I'm sending out the link to, um, or have sent out the link to last week's message in case um, any of you uh, would like to send out the link to that message um, to anyone that you know of that, you know, might like to um, to find out the real deal about Jesus or Christianity and um, and really would like to also be able to know for themselves what's true and how to tell what's true. So all of that being said, if this is your first time this week, welcome. Please say uh, hello and reach out by texting the word hello to 818-873-8370. 3370 or you can email me at contact at the house of his or if you would like prayer um, please text the word prayer to 818-873-3370 amen all right well as I said I'm just so glad that you're here with me today it is fifth Sunday it's youth Sunday so right after um this uh, brief little introduction I'll be back with opening prayer so you have time if you know anyone who is a teenager college age young adult um, new adult please invite them to watch have them tune in there's still time before the message starts so I'll be right back um, after this brief little introduction and we will have opening prayer And now it's air in our chest That's why we're singing it back to you For every battle you want, For everything that you've done And everything that you're gonna do See too much to ever doubt it Feel so good I wanna shout it Yeah when I really think about it All I wanna do All I wanna do is That's why we
for the box to shout. We got a reason to praise. This is the song of the saints. No, we ain't gonna turn it down. Okay, all right, I'm back. Let's just go right into opening prayer and invite Heavenly Father to be in the midst of our time together, all right? Father, thank you so much for this day, for another opportunity to fellowship with one another, to fellowship in the spirit with you, to fellowship in your word. Father, help us to um, to truly just come to this place and time uh, without any distractions, without any uh, um, hindrances, obstacles, or barriers that would keep us from receiving what you have for us today. Father, I thank you for everyone that you have brought to this message. Um, no matter how young or old, Father, that uh, you would speak to each one uh, tuning in to this message, each one worshiping uh, with us during this service, Father, that you would let them know that um, you have a word just for them. Uh, no matter what their age is, Father. If if there's anyone watching who's been struggling uh, with health issues, been struggling with uh, loneliness, been struggling uh, with a tough decision, been struggling um, uh, with a family member, uh, Father, whatever concerns, issues, or problems, whether financial or personal or emotional, um, struggling with depression, Father, I pray that you would just uh, alleviate um, those concerns and uh, give peace of mind, Father, that you would uh, touch hearts and minds and bodies through this message, through this prayer, Father, that uh, you would speak peace, you would speak hope, you would speak encouragement and love over everyone watching or listening, Father, uh, that they could truly receive what they need from you through this message. And so I ask you to use me, Father, help me to relay this word in a way that uh, we all can relate to it, we all can receive from it, Father, that you would speak to us individually and let us each know that this word, uh, no matter what, is still from your heart for each one of us. Help us to recognize ourselves in this message that we each might um, uh, be more and more conformed into the image of your son Jesus, where we would um, see our path and our purpose with more clarity, that we would be able to see ourselves through your eyes. Again, no matter how young or how old we might be, Father, speak to us uh, through this message today. And Father, if there's anyone who does not know Jesus as their own Lord and Savior, Father, draw them closer to your spirit. Let them know how much you love them. Draw them to that place where they confess with their mouths that they believe in their hearts that Jesus is Lord and that you raised him from the dead and that they would come to a place where they ask you to receive them and to forgive them and to make them your own. Father, I love you. We praise you. We thank you for being in the midst of uh, this time together and connecting 
connecting us uh, through your spirit. We give you all praise and glory for this message and this time. And we pray this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Hey, you know what? Like I said, it is Youth Sunday. You still have time to invite someone. And uh, as I said in the prayer, even though it's fifth Sunday and I tailor this message um, for um, teens and young adults, I guarantee that we all can uh, hear what God has for us all through this word today. So right after this praise song, I'll be right back with the message God has for us today. I've gotten such good feedback and I felt good about it when I was uh, watching it um, back as well um, man I just was like oh just praying that God would truly um, use that message to to really make a difference in people's lives or at least answer questions that um, you know just don't ordinarily 
get asked. Amen. And so thank you for support in that. And like I said, I'm going to offer it as a resource uh, for you, for all of us to use whenever we meet someone uh, with questions that we uh, can't answer. Or, you know, that maybe they're, they would just feel better to to get those answers on their own privately without feeling, you know, put on the spot. Um, um, and, and maybe they will come back. And if they do come back uh, with questions, uh, to you, you know, just pray for them. Let Holy Spirit guide you in in um, in how to use that uh, to reach people for Him. But um, and so this Sunday, like I've been saying, it's it's um, Youth Sunday, young adults, and um, today I'm I want to kind of talk to the youth and young adults. In um, in a way that uh, that fits our outer limits theme for this October, um, uh, and and uh, and really tailor it in a way that, like I've been saying, you know, fits the kind of life uh, that you guys are living right now. Um, but really, it also fits the kind of world that we're all living in right now. So I want to talk um, to those of you out there that are my son's age and going through the same stages of life uh, that he is going through right now, whether uh, you are uh, just out of high school, whether you are just newly out of the house. Uh, living on your own for the first time, if you have just newly turned 18, um, uh, that uh, you're just um, out in the world doing your own thing, living life um, uh, in this, like I said, these new stages, or, you know, maybe you're just um, finally starting to feel like, oh, this is what it means to to be a, a young adult, right? And it's an exciting stage of life. It's also a scary stage of life. Sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes it's, you know, overwhelming. Um, sometimes you feel out, out of your league. Um, you know, the phrase is like a fish out of water. You know, a lot of times, a lot of, you know, a lot of a lot of people are like big man on campus in high school. You know, they you get high school figured out, um, and and you're in it for so long. And even though you know, okay, college is gonna be uh, new and different, and uh, you know, a whole other beast. It's like when you get in there, you you start to realize, whoa, you know. This is a whole lot different than, than what you're used to. And, you know, you can just really feel just totally out there, just exposed or vulnerable, scared or sad. And there's a whole plethora of emotions that you can go through and maybe just in one day's time, right? Um, or, or even if you're not living away from home, you know, you do get this new sense of responsibility that you've got to be responsible for yourself, that you're out in the world and, you know, you got to make your, your own way out and about in the world. And that's the title of today's message, Out and About. And um, one of the things that when you're coming into this stage, you you really are doing exactly as Scripture says. And you're starting to put away those childish things and sort out, okay, what does it mean to become an adult, to become a young woman, to become a man? And so this is what Scripture says um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child... I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. But here's the real deal when it comes to 
putting away those childish things, those childish mindsets, those childish perspectives, uh, those childish ways of life or pursuits of life, really. Uh, the primary thing is that putting away childish things should not mean putting away godly things, all right? And, uh, and godly things shouldn't mean uh, or seem like um, it's something that you don't need or don't want in your life. Like, there shouldn't be this dividing line like, you know, oh, if it's godly, you know, it's, it's going to be... Um, stupid or nerdy, I don't know what the adjectives, it's going to be trash, it's going to be whack, I don't know what the slang is <laughs> that you might put on there, but um, putting on or walking in uh, a godly lifestyle shouldn't seem like it's something that you don't need or that you don't want to do or that you know you would uh, not be yourself if you walked in godly ways so let me tell you the real deal about uh, walking in godly ways is that that's how you are going to get ahead in life. That's how you're going to have the upper hand. That's how you're going to succeed in life. Like you, you're in this place right now, right? Where, like I said, you're going into adulthood. You're stepping into uh, your future, right? You're determining uh, what you want to be when you grow up. That you're growing up and you're starting that path to pursue. What kind of adult are you going to be? What kind of job are you going to have? Where are you going to live? What kind of friends you want? What kind of significant other uh, you're going to have in your life, right? It's this truly transitioning uh, phase and stage of your life where, uh, trust me, if you want to have that uh, awesome life that you're beginning to picture for yourself, you should not and cannot and you'd be better off not uh, making that separate from God in your life. I promise you, if you do it God's way and you do it with God, it's going to be better than any way you can come up with on your own. Take it from someone who tried. <laughs> Most all of us have tried and it's a hard way to go. Uh, and, uh, and listen, that's just in the natural. But Biblically, it's worse than just a hard way. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And look, I know, okay, that sounds so extreme, that sounds so harsh, and it's so easy to be like, Okay, well, that's just the Bible being the Bible, you know, all these rules and regulations and rights and wrongs. But listen, you know, you can just think of it this way, um, that, that living life um, any other way than God's way is just... It's not going to be life. It's not going to be filled with that abundance, um, with that... Uh, with that um, productive, um, beneficial uh, excellence of life that that God is talking about. So, so while you know, okay, it may not end up, you know, in dead as in in the grave. But let me tell you, there is an enemy who is trying to put you down in the grave, and there's so much that you can be exposed to, and there's so many dangers, and you know, there's this world. Right? I mean, look around at this world. There are so many ways that can still end up in death. But just in practical matters, you, you know, when you're fantasizing or imagining this awesome life, you know, you're not imagining the struggles, the depression, the hardships, the pain, the betrayal, the, you know, the difficult relationships. 
and those are the ways that uh, that lead to you know the death of your self esteem, the death of your motivation, the death of your peace of mind, the death of uh, your purpose, and uh, and the success that God has planned for you. He he has plans and thoughts that he's always thinking towards you and they are good and not evil like you don't have to separate well what you want is going to be the only thing that's going to be good or fun or beneficial or exciting or you know the only uh or the best thing for you like God's best is still going to be good and exciting and fulfilling even more than what you can imagine for yourself. But then it comes with all kinds of other stuff like his help, his strength, his guidance, his protection, his abundance, his provision, his prosperity, his well-being, right? So I just... There's so many things that I want to tell you and there's so many ways that I want to try to get this across to you. Like make the decision now. Even if it's in your schoolwork, even if it's with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, even if it's in relationship with your family or if you've got a job, you know, or gosh, just just going about your day to day. Listen, make the commitment to to do it with God. It will be so much better off than you just scrabbling around trying to figure it out on your own. And 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 I promise you by the time I came to the Lord when I was like I think I was 21, right? And I had graduated high school when I was 17. And it was already like, man, I wish I had known this a long time ago. And so, you know, you're going to make your own decision. But I want you to have uh, all of the resources before you to make that right and righteous decision. Now, Here's the thing I want to relay it to. Do you remember that story um, in the Bible about the Tower of Babel? All right. That's when um, uh, it was a while after the flood. Mankind had, uh, you know, repopulated the earth. Right. And uh, and men had decided they were going to build a city and a tower that was going to reach to the heavens and make a name for themselves all right and the thing is it might sound like a bible story like you just rack it up with david and goliath just like it's an imaginary you know fairy tale or something but the truth is they did it they actually accomplished what they set out to accomplish. And uh, and so let me read you a couple of those verses in Genesis 11, verses 5 and 6. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So look, God's checking out what mankind is doing. The city they're building, this tower they're building, and he's like, there is nothing that can keep them from doing what they put their mind to, what they imagine to do. So he says, let us go down, and he confounded their language. He didn't confound their imagination. Uh, and I say there, but it's really, it's still ours. Like our imagination was never confounded. It was our ability to communicate as one. It was our ability to be on one accord. All right. 
And so we still, as human beings, have this phenomenal imagination um, that we can tap into. And you are the generation I feel like is most like um, these People like this Tower of Babel was really the beginning of this uh, region and this era and this mindset of uh, Babylon. Okay, and so Babylon today represents this worldly, materialistic um, uh, commerce and uh, greed and wealth and trade and business. Every aspect of our society uh, that exists now um, comes as far as as far as business and commerce and um, and the marketplace and uh, banking and credit and things like that uh, is is rooted and grounded in this aspect of uh, Babylon that bego began in this era but when you look at these people right who were building this city and building this tower in the midst midst of this worldly, um, you know, just decadence and um, just, they were doing, <laughs> doing the most, right? The absolute most. But in the midst of this, you have a people that, think about it this way, they, they were builders, they were creative, uh, they were inventors, they were imaginative, they were leaders, right? Uh, they had the ability to shape culture and shape communities and influence people. I mean, you talk about influencers today. These were the true influencers. And I see so much of your generation with these skills and abilities. Like, you can do anything. Think about it. You have access to the whole world in the palm of your hands. And you are of a generation and an era where that's not new. That's all you've known, right? Um, good or bad, you have access to it. Good or bad, you can find out about it. Good or bad, you can make up your own mind about it. You have more freedom, more abilities, and um, more capabilities, and more understanding or access uh, to, to things like we wouldn't even think to think of all because of social media right uh, you have a broader range of possibilities and intentions made available to you and so out of all of this um, input right and all of this information where do you sort out you the you that is a builder or a creator or is imaginative or is a leader or is a, uh, an influencer or a, a culture shaper, right? Where are you in the midst of all that this world has to offer? What are you about? Who are you going to be in this world? All right, and what kind of uh, um, fruit are you going to produce? Here's why I asked that question from John chapter 15 and verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. This is written in red and spoken by Jesus. And this is why I said, you know, at the top of the message, the top of the service, that ultimately this message is for all of us. No matter how young, no matter how old. Jesus is saying he is the vine and that we are the branches, all right? And so when you have any kind of, uh, well, he's liking it to, um, you know, to uh, the, the, um, the grape, yeah, the grapevine, <laughs> there you go, that the vine comes up, 
right? And then the branches come off of the vine and the fruit is produced on the branches. But the branch all by itself, if it's not on the vine, it can't produce that fruit. It has to receive all of its nutrients. It has to receive everything it can get from that vine in order to be able to produce that fruit. Okay? And so Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. And no matter what, like you cannot produce good fruit. You can't produce fruit outside of Jesus. And and so here's the, let me reconcile this contradiction for you, okay? Like, God did not confound our imagination, right? He only confounded our language. So you can do stuff right? You still have the ability to do amazing things, to imagine amazing things, right? But we're going back to the ways of a man seem right, but they still lead unto death. Like, what is uh, the fruit that you're producing doing for you or for the world? Right? Are you going to produce something in your life that's going to be worthwhile, that's going to be beneficial, that's going to be helpful, that's going to be powerful? Are you producing something from your life that has been put in there by God? Are you producing something out of your life uh, that is fueled by God, that is empowered by God? Because, listen... You are able, you are quite able to do extraordinary things, to do great and incredible things. And part of, uh, you know, this era that you're living in, like, you can get away with accomplishing all kinds of interesting stuff uh, without putting in very much effort. You can, uh, because of the state of the world right now, you can probably uh, do all right um, without doing very much with God or through God. But do you want to just do all right? Do you want to just get by? Uh, because, look, right now, it's all good. It's all exciting. It's all wonderful. But you, the life you are living now, that you're uh, transitioning into now, is paving the way for uh, the life that you'll have, you know, in your 20s, in your 30s. Um, it's easy to just look at today for what today is going to bring you. Um, and so this is why I'm like hoping that I can get through to you uh, when it comes to putting away those childish things and you're becoming a man, you're becoming a woman. It's time to look at, okay, what does that adulthood look like? What are you going to be about? What are you going to put out into the world and are you going to do it uh, with integrity are you going to do it uh, with uh, with a strength that comes from God or are you going to do it on your own efforts are you going to do it as a part of the world trying to fit into the world because scripture says that if you've accepted Jesus then you are uh, in the world but not of the world and so when you're trying to fit into the world and mold yourself into uh, the ways of the world you're trying to conform into the image of the world uh, that's when you're walking in those ways that will lead to death but Jesus says that we can be in this world but not of this world and uh, to do that we need to work out what we're really about through him and all you do all you put your hand to do it with integrity do it with pride do it with a sense of 
excellence, the kind of excellence that comes from God and God alone. You can do nothing worthwhile. You can do nothing of benefit. You can do nothing of power and purpose without Jesus and uh, and. Look, we know this. It's the gym verse, right? Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So, look, I like to take this, this verse literally. All things. All things. You can do all things. You can manage your your school work, your school life. You can manage your relationships with your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your parents, um, your whatever other family members. You can, um, you know, manage a job or, you know, you're paying your bills and you've got to be responsible for a car or your insurance or gas. Whatever it is going on in your life right now, if you're active in sports, if you're active in music, if you have a passion uh, that you are pursuing, you have a hobby that, you know, fuels you and fills you, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. You're looking ahead to your future. You're looking ahead to, you know, living life and experiencing uh, the world. You can do all things through Christ Jesus. And when it gets hard, when it gets difficult, when it gets to be a challenge, when you feel in over your head, if you feel sad, if you feel lonely, if you feel depressed, if you feel like uh, you know, you're on the wrong path and you want to adjust your path, God will give you the strength to do it. All things can be done through Jesus Christ and He will give you the strength to do it. And I guarantee you, I mean, I guarantee you that if you seek Him and seek His help and do it with Him and do it through Him and do it for Him and allow Him to strengthen you, you will love your life. You will enjoy your life. You will not be stuck out in a hut somewhere doing something you don't want to do, but you will find out that the desires you have in your heart that God wants to fulfill are not only the desires that He's put in there, but they're desires that you desire. And so, whatever you do, as you're out and about in this world, what are you putting out into this world? What kind of uh, a human being uh, do you want to be in this world? And what are you going to get out of uh, this Christian walk that God has for you, this life that God has for you? And so I just, I'm putting it out there, trust Him. Do it with Him. Walk with him and allow him to guide you um, and, and help you work out this abundant, Zoe, awesome, blessed, purpose filled and power fueled life that he has just for you. Amen. God bless you. I hope that you do. I hope that you work it out with him. Amen. Let's go into this song of worship and I'll be back with partnership and prayer. If I had a dollar for every time they say God wanna gonna go through, I'd be a millionaire. If I had a dollar for every time they say, God, what I'm going to come to, I'd be a millionaire. Oh, uh. <laughs> come on. My was about to lose my mind, but God came right on time. He made a way out no way. Yeah. And uh. I thought it was the end, but he stepped in again and made a way.
say God wanna gonna come through, I'd be a millionaire. Oh, uh, preach. If I had a dollar for every time they say God wanna gonna come through, I'd be a millionaire. Oh, uh, oh, oh, my back against the wall. It looked impossible, but he made a way. to invite you to partner with this ministry, to partner with what God might have for you through this congregation. And so if you'd like to be a partner uh, with this congregation, you can do so by going to the website, thehouseofhisglory.com, clicking on the contact page, and there's a link that says join the congregation. You can fill out the information there, or you can fill out the same information by texting the word JOIN to 818-873-3370. You can also partner with this, um, with this message through your giving. And so next month, and Thanksgiving next week, not Thanksgiving is not next week, you know that, right? <laughs> um, but next one, month, oh gosh, all of a sudden I can't think or speak. Next month, all month, during the month of Thanksgiving, I'm going to be talking about why giving is significant, why giving is important, um, not just to God like He wants your money, but why it's, uh, uh, why it's important to your life, why it's a blessing and a benefit uh, uh, for you um, and for your own uh, success and prosperity and well-being. Amen. And so uh, for now, you know, Malachi uh, 3 and 10 says that if you bring your tithes and offering into the storehouse, God will pour you out a blessing so great it cannot be contained. And so we all automatically think of, okay, well, he's going to bless me and give me stuff. Uh, but when you when you uh, sow a tither or offering into a particular message, that message is the blessing that he's going to pour out into your life so that he can pour you out into the world as an example of that word as well. Um, and so it's a way to connect with God and show God that you trust him and that you want him. Uh, to work in your life according to uh, that message. And so I invite you uh, to give into this message or to give into this congregation. It's the way that God continues to bless people's life, to continue this cycle um, as you give. He says, um, in blessing, I will bless you. So as you bless this congregation, he's going to turn around and bless you as well. So 
if you are watching us live um, you can click above the logo there's a giving link there if you're watching from uh, on demand then there's giving links on the website or on the app um, and if you're watching from YouTube you can um, cash up your giving if you'd like uh, to dollar sign HOHG Church however you give whatever you give and even if you give of your support your encouragement your prayers whatever you give God says in Luke 6 and 38 give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Men are going to give it back to you one way or another. Amen. And so however you give, thank you so much for your giving. God bless you. God bless you. And um, and like I said, we'll, we'll talk more about that next month. And until then, thank you for your giving. Let's go into final closing prayer. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining me back for this final closing prayer, this final prayer of October, our final prayer in the Outer Limits sermon series for this month it is october 30th tomorrow is the 31st um you know what i really I, I, this just popped into my mind and i will just say this you know with the state that the world is in continued um mass shootings uh domestic crimes uh, family members against their own family members, uh, their own children, uh, with the state of the government right now, um, the state of hatred um, that seems to be politically based. Um, you know, uh, let's not celebrate death. Let's not um, really magnify what the devil is doing and give him any place of encouragement or celebration that's my take on it um, you know let's find a way to celebrate life and encourage life and encourage love and and just as scripture says not give place to the devil all right um, and so those are my two cents on it other than that enjoy the candy <laughs> and uh, and so let's just pray all right no more preaching <laughs> I'm not gonna start a new message a new topic let's just pray father thank you so much for today I thank you for each and every one who listened and worshiped with today's message father i pray that you would touch hearts with your truth father that you would encourage us each uh to stand a little bit taller to uh, be a, a little bit more confident in you to see a little more clearly uh, just exactly what you have for us the kind of life that we might be able to live the possibilities of great and greater things that we each can do or accomplish through you. Father, encourage us and give us the motivation to want to pursue all that you have for us, uh, to be exactly who you created us each to be, and uh, to pursue your God-given purposes for us, and to strive to have everything that Jesus died on the cross for us to have. Father, increase our faith by your word. Father, uh, ignite in us um, that encouragement we need to commit uh, to living life uh, with you and for you, that excitement of knowing that 
God, the creator, abides and resides within us. And that desire to hear your voice, that desire to feel your presence, that desire to be led by you, knowing that, gosh, there's nothing better in this world than uh, living life with you and for you. Father, uh, I just thank you for healing bodies right now for giving us peace of mind father for clearing away any depression or confusion father for clearing away fear father for bathing us in the knowledge of your perfect love and acceptance for us teaching us and showing us that we are loved and beloved by you that we are each the apple of your eye that we are forgiven that you don't look at our uh, faults and our wrongs that you choose uh, not to uh, remember our iniquities any longer that all you see when you look at us is the shed blood of Jesus that you see uh, um, the, the perfect life that you have created for us help us to see that life as well father help us to lean into your thoughts and your plans for us father help us to uh, delight in you knowing that when we do you will give us the desires of our hearts father heal our bodies Father, heal our minds and our souls and our wills and, uh, and teach us that we don't have to live out of our emotions. We don't have to live subject to reacting to whatever the enemy throws at us. But Father, help us to walk in strength, your strength and the power of your might. And so Father, right now, I, I bring before you friends and family members that we have been praying for uh this past week this past month we 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 bring them up before you father asking you to send angels of healing um to annihilate cancer uh to make uh um, recoveries after heart attacks um uh, complete and thorough father uh, to to help strengthen hearts minds and bodies of uh, and, and just just remove all traces of, of disease and dis-ease from our lives father I ask you also to encourage each and every young person watching and praying with us now that they would walk in the fullness of all that you have for them that they would be examples of your power your grace and your mercy your love and your forgiveness in the earth father we thank you for Jesus Christ for his love uh, and for um, for forgiving us of all of our sins we just thank you for being our God for being a good God we love you, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you, we lift up your name. You are mighty, you are awesome, you are wonderful, you are glorious, you are gracious, you are faithful, you are true. And we thank you for loving us. Father, we love you too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and God bless you. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining me uh, this month. And I look forward to seeing you next week, next month in November. Woohoo! Until then, go in His glory. Walk in power. Like, try. Try to walk in power. And try to receive all the blessings of the kingdom of God that He has just for you. I love you very much. I truly do. Bye-bye.